you could still be have a relationship with a holy and righteous God is because of what he does. But again, you know, again, that would take a lot of time to go through correctly. And, uh, but anyway, all right, so uh, let's see. Uh, there's another verse that talks about it, the sword. Um, one I like the better is Ephesians. You know, it's a, a great study in Ephesians chapter 6, the whole armor of God. I know the kids have done it a couple of times back there. That's a great, great thing to look at. All those different things, the helmet of salvation, the shield, uh, the sword. And that's what we're talking about here. Ephesians six seventeen. it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And the reason you've got to take it is because... Well, in verse 11, it says that we're supposed to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. I had a bunch of examples of that. Um, I don't know what you all do when you read the news or, or hear things, or, but I, I try to figure out a way uh, that makes sense to me to, to use them. And there's so much... The wiles of the devil. <laughs> you just see so much stuff going on in this world. And we're supposed to stand. You know, we're supposed to not be backing up. We're supposed to, I mean, as we grow nearer to the time, it's going to be much more difficult. I mean, we, we got it easy, uh, or at least we did. I think it's getting kind of difficult now to really stand for God all the time, you know. Um, and, you know, with that, you're, you're not perfect, okay? And I'm not trying to give you a pass, but I don't know anybody in here that's perfect, okay? And you, you're going to mess up once in a while. Just don't make it a habit. And once you do, fix it. Um, you know, I mean, if you, if you slip, you get up and you stand. I mean, and... Uh, you don't give the devil a place. Um, he's going to beat you down. Sure, it may seem like right now it's easier to live if, if you're not standing for God. <laughs> uh, if you just capitulate into the world and just rolling over and playing like a good little dog, you know, and just going along. But it isn't. Just like I, I said earlier, and, and again, we're going to touch on it in a, in a minute, but um, this, I think it's Job says this life is but a vapor, or maybe it's James or Peter, right? One, one of those. Anyway, they're all good, but, um, you know, life is but a vapor down here. I mean, for the even if you get 100 years down here, that, that's not even a blip in eternity. And only what you do down here is going to matter for what you do up through eternity. You know, I mean, if you, if, like I said, if you roll over down here and, uh, and don't stand up for God, that's, you know, you're just not going to have anything up there. All right, we're going to talk about that in a minute too. But all right, the third one, uh, we'll move through this one real quick. Uh, third one's like a hammer. Uh, Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine. It says, "Is not my word like a fire?" saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh rock into pieces. Um, there's actually two of them in there. Um, fire. We'll talk about the fire next. But um, you know, we just looked at the verse in Hebrews talking about the. The Word of God's powerful. And here in Jeremiah, he's talking about it's a hammer. And uh, the only thing I could really come up with good about that is, well, it, it's used to break up your stony heart, but also your hard head. <laughs> okay? I mean, God, he needs to, you know, get your attention sometimes. And, but all these are predicated on, for him to be able to use this in your life, you have to do your part. You've got to read it. If you're not reading it, he can't deal with you 
and try to correct you or do anything like that with you if you're not spending any time with it. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, all right. So uh, the fourth one is what we were just talking about in Jeremiah. It's a fire. Jeremiah 23, uh, 29, it says, It's not my, not my word uh, like a fire, saith the Lord. And there's a couple of th- pictures in my mind when I, when I read that and I, I think about this. And, and the Bible says that we're going to be judged by this one day. And uh, what God said, we're going to be judged by it. And for the Christian, uh, we've got a judgment seat of Christ to look forward to. 1 Corinthians 3, 13, every man's work should be manifest for the day of, shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the, um, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. One day when you stand in front of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're saved, you're going to have a pile there. And it's all the things you accumulated while you were here on earth. And he's going to test it with fire. And when he does, a lot of the stuff that we hold dear right now is going to get burned up. Because it it doesn't mean anything, at least not in God's sight. You know, the things that God holds dear, well, you, you can find out what it is. All you got to do is read your Bible. You know, if you want to know the mind of Christ, that's the whole purpose of the Bible. Is he, he did this so that you would know something about him, know something about his son, know how to act. I mean, uh, anyway. All right, so that's one, one fire. And uh, like I said, everything we hold down here uh, is going to go, uh, hold deer down here is, is going to be tested by fire. And only what you have left after the fire if it's wood, hay, or stubble, it gets burned up. If it's gold, precious stones, so gold, silver, and precious stones, then it, then it lasts. Um, that's why it's important to put up what you can up there. Um, so let's see, what's the next one? Still on fire. Um, oh, this is, I like this one a lot. Uh, these next couple of verses. There's a, there's a couple of verses that talk about, again, the Word and how people react to it. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9 says, Then I said, uh, I will not men- make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but the Word was in mine heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I was weary uh, with forbearing, and I could not stay. <laughs> Even if, it, if it's down there, it's going to burn you up inside. You're going to know. That's one of the ways you can know that you're actually saved is by, uh, you know, him prompting you and the Holy Spirit prompting you. That, that word is, is just in there. If you put it in there, and it'll, it'll like, it, like he's, Jeremiah says, it, it's burning up inside of him. Uh, another one was Luke 24, 32, where... After the resurrection, Christ is walking on the road and he meets these two disciples going to what's called the road to Emmaus. And uh, it says in verse uh, 20, Luke 24, 32, it says, And he said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the way and while he opened us the Scriptures? The Scriptures would do something down inside of you if, if you let it. It'll do something down inside of you. Uh, their hearts burned when they, they, they had something, uh, got something out of the Scriptures. Uh, now the last fire, <laughs> um, that's the last one mentioned in Revelation. Well, actually, I think there's one after that, but in Re- Revelation 20, verse 15, um, this is, like I said, it's why this is important, one of the reasons is because this is the way you gain eternal life, is through here. And, uh, and the other thing about it is, and like I said, it's, it's totally up to you, but you have, etern- you have eternal life. Whether, 
when, when your life ends down here and you think everything's over and all your friends cry, or a couple friends you got, and the people come and they send flowers to your, that, that's not it. <laughs> that's not it for anybody. The Christian goes on ahead, goes home, uh, and the lost person ends up in hell. That's uh, Revelation 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And that fire is eternal, just like God's eternal. That, that fire is eternal. Uh, all right. The fifth thing <laughs> uh, is, and this one I even hate to mention, but uh, according to James 1, 23 and 24, for if any you be a hearer of the word and, and not a doer, he is like unto a man that beholdeth his face in a glass, uh, for he beholdeth himself, uh, beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth the manner of man he was. Uh, this is what we commonly call a mirror, okay? Uh, man, you look into your Bible, and that Bible shows you what you are if you let it. But you got to open it up. <laughs> Doesn't do you any good if it's sitting on the shelf or sitting in the window of your car or sitting on the uh, your nightstand or or wherever. You know, uh, if you don't open it up and read it, it doesn't do you any good. Um, the reason I I hate to call it a mirror is because mirror doesn't show up in the Bible. And I kind of made a promise to myself a long time ago that I'd try to stick with Bible words. <laughs> But the bad part is, is I don't know if you all know that, that song, The Mirror. Uh, Kevin Griffith sung it. Some other people sang it. That is probably the best song. I love it. It's so convicting. <laughs> I mean, it talks about how, you know, when you, when you first got saved, you thought there was something the matter with the mirror because you look into it. And then all of a sudden you realize that that mirror is just showing you what you really are. And, you know, it's helping you change the way God wants you to end up being. Um, you know, the Bible says, 1 Samuel 16, 7, that man looketh on the outs outward, but God looketh on the heart. And uh, so anyway, if uh, here it's called a glass. Um, and then in Exodus 38, 8, um, it, to me this is always an interesting verse. Um, it says, and he made the laver of brass and the foot of it of brass of the looking glasses of the women assemb uh, assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So it take a long time to explain, but uh, there was this big bowl of water, basically, that had a, a foot and uh, the priests, before they could go into the tabernacle, would have to wash themselves. And they made the, the foot of it out of the looking glasses of the women. Now, it's interesting, since I'm up here, I can say it, but it doesn't say the looking glasses of the men, okay? It says the looking glasses of the women. All right, but anyway, y'all will get that in a minute. All right, so, but... That if you if you think about that, every time they washed, they had to look at themselves because they had those looking glasses there, those those mirrors that they could look at, and and that's what we're supposed to do in in here, is we're supposed to look in here and 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 anyway, it's so the Bible's like a mirror. Um, the sixth thing, you know. We're about out of time, but the sixth thing is a, is a lamp. Of course, that Psalms uh, 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, you know, if you, uh, you know, it's to me, again, it's, it's interesting that he divides that up. You know, one is a light unto my path is like a general light. And your Bible is. It'll give you a, a general, broad view of something. But it's also a lamp. It pinpoints. <laughs> and again, it, it does you no good if you don't get into it. But 
it'll pinpoint what your problem is and help you fix it if you let it. It'll, you know, that's what the lamp does. The lamp directs the light in one specific area where the light is just a, it's a, it's a light and it's a general light. You know, everybody has, everybody, everybody has some of the same problems. That's a general light. But then when you get down to specific ones, then you need a lamp to shine it right on it, you know. And the Bible covers both of them. Um, so, uh, and then in another uh, 7 and 8, uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 11 says, The words of, of the wise are as goads and the nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given uh, from one shepherd. So a goad is... Uh, it's basically a sharp stick, and that's the word of God. A lot of times, it you know we use the phrase all the time. It, we goad somebody into doing something. In other words, you're taking a sharp stick and you're jabbing them because you want them to go that direction. So you give them a little bit of help, you know, encouragement we call it. But you're goading them to to do something. Um, so it's it's like a goad, but it's also like nails. And in conjunction with the hammer, which is also your word of God, you can fasten stuff together. I mean, nowadays, we don't have a clue <laughs> what it was. Well, Donnie understands a little bit. He's old enough. Um, but back in the day, there wasn't any screws because you couldn't put them in with a screwdriver because there was no power. <laughs> There was no battery-operated stuff. Back in the day, you used a hammer and nails to attach everything. And nowadays, um, you know, every you know, you talk about a hammer and nails, people don't understand what you're talking about. Um, let's see. This is, uh, I guess, this would be a good place to stop, but. Um, the next five are, are food related, um, and uh, and then the last one's water. But um, I guess this would be a good place to stop. I really thought I was going to get through them all, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, well, maybe another time. But I got accomplished. I hopefully what I should have got accomplished. Hopefully. Um, all right, so. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I ask you now in, in your save, your son's uh, your son's name, Lord, to uh, bless this evening, Lord. I pray you'd uh, do something with the mess I created here tonight, tonight Lord, and that uh, that it would some parts of it would stick to some people and not to others. And I mean, that's the whole purpose of it. Is you know, you can't talk to one or two people, you need to kind of spread it out, Lord, and hopefully it'll get mean something to, at least one part of it will mean something to somebody else. I pray you'd uh, use a little bit of stuff that we did tonight, Lord, and uh, use it to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.